Guys, my name is John Hamilton and today I'm going to be teaching you how to set up this randomly shooting enemy. So this enemy is going to always shoot at the player randomly and it's pretty cool and it could be useful for a lot of games instead of having a completely steady, it's more random looking and as you can see it shoots one or three at a time sometimes or just different times or as you can see there it shot a bunch. So let's get into it and let's learn how to do it. Alright, so we're going to start off by getting our enemy to shoot at our player so we actually need to make a player and an enemy so i'm going to be using this default cube as our enemy which is going to point at our player and shoot so this is going to be very basic it's going to point it's not going to move or anything and neither is the player actually but we're just going to move this down here so let's give the player a name and obviously it's going to be player Right, and the enemy can just stay cube for now, just easier. Um, so what we want to do is we want our cube or enemy to look at our player because we want it to shoot. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to add a always, and then we're going to add a edit object and track too. So what this always is going to do is it's going to say to this that we always are going to track to this object, right? So, over here we have a few options. So, track to, we just changed. Um, we have object here, so we can select player. Time, what time will allow you to do is to have how much time it will take before the object is completely looking at your player or whatever object it's looking at. So, if you were to turn that up, it would take a little while. So, what you see? is it takes a little while so you can just leave that at zero if you like all right and down here we have the up axis you should most of the time pretty much leave this the same and it shouldn't make much of a difference so there we go and the last one which is reasonably important is the track to axis so right now it's using the y axis this this one's going to look at this and that's good and if you want that that's great i think just because it's easier we are going to have it as, as this red one because it's closer so what we can do is we can change this to the x because the red line is x right here so what you'll see if we get a little bit of time actually so you can see it turns a lot less that's right there and you can come here and add this 3d and that's going to make it be able to look in three dimensions instead of two dimensions as you can see it looks straight at it all right <coughs> now that that is set up we want this to randomly pick times to shoot at this because we don't want it to just be constantly exactly the same because that's a bit boring now, you can't actually truly have randomness, but you can make it look like it's random. So that's what we are going to be doing. So what we're going to want to do is add a, a delay sensor, and this is going to have a delay of 1 and a duration of 1. So what the delay means is time has to wait before it can send a signal out. Then the duration here is how long that signal will be, and if we enable this to repeat, it will just repeat the whole sequence over again. So it will wait one tick, then it will send out a signal for one tick, and then it will repeat. So you might send, set this delay to 5, and that should be fine. So now what we want to do is we want to add a random, where is it? Random actuator. So it should be right here, random. All right. So as you can see, we have many settings here. So one of the settings we have here is seed. And if you don't know what the seed is, it is like the, well, it's like a seed. It will, of like a tree or something, it will, your randomness will come off this. Since you don't have, you can't have true randomness, this is what you use to make it kind of look like you have different. So let's say you have a bunch of these in the same scene, might and you duplicate then you on might want to change the randomness or they will all shoot at the same time so i'm just going to delete that and um, we're going to use a random one of just 81 
Right, and down here we have the property. So this is a property which is going to apply the randomness to. So we're going to add a property here, and this is going to be integer. Um, an integer is just whole numbers. Shot. I'm going to call this shot. Um, this is his name, and it's not going to affect it, except you'll be able to find it in the lists and all that stuff with this name. But the data is going to be held right here. So as you can see, it's whole numbers, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all those things. So let's just leave that at zero. Um, we don't need to change that in here. And in the property settings, we're going to change this to shot. So this is going to apply it to shot. Um, now what you see down here is we have this always true. And the reason that's there is because we are actually on the wrong type for what we are going to use. So what you see is we have a lot here, but the one we're going to want to do is int underscore ununiform. All right, and when you click that right here, as you can see, we come up with some different settings. So we have the max and the min. So this is going to choose between these, depending on your seed, and it's going to give you a number in between them. So let's say 10 is going to be our number. So it's going to be between choose between 0 and 10 and also those two numbers are going to be included and what you see is if we were to connect this up and then we are to come over here and click this print debug info what that's going to do is it's going to print the property to the screen so if we come over here to show debug properties what you see is you can see it on the screen doing random numbers so what we're, what we're going to do is we're going to have a property over here. And what this property is going to do is it's going to send a signal out if we get one of these numbers in between here. So you can use whatever number you like. I am going to be using shot and this is going to be one. So you see, um, you don't see anything because it's not actually connected. But if we get one... It's going to send a true signal out here on our shot property. All right. So let's add an add object. And we'll connect this up. And close this. So we're going to add some kind of projectile or whatever the enemy's doing. Throwing something at you or something like that. So we come here and we go. And let's make a projectile. So we're going to be using an icosphere since it seems like a nice projectile. And we're going to give it some... Physics, rigid body, and also going to come down here, and we're going to change this to a sphere. All right. So what you see is we need to move it to another layer, or else it's not going to be added. And we also need to come down here and add it in the icosphere in the slot of objects to add. So what you see is it is not adding it, and the reason for that is should be being added because it's invisible um, what you should see is it should work as you can see it's just very unlikely it will be added so what you might want to do is actually change this back down to one and you can see it's getting added but it's not getting fired out so the way you can do that is you can come here, and since it's gonna, since our one points this direction, we want it to come out the x axis. So right here, linear velocity, and we're gonna change the x to something like twenty. And what you see is nothing is happening, and the reason for that is we need to make this object a ghost because it is kind of not working with the physics. And you can see it's it's, it's shooting them out in direction, but it's it's the wrong direction. So the reason for this is it is shooting them out of this one and it's not taking into account this. And the reason for that is you can see these two L's here which mean local if you enable those. It's going to shoot them from, it's going to add them and give that them that velocity from the local rotation of the object. So you can see it's shooting them out and it's shooting them looks quite randomly from the seed you selected and yeah it works pretty good and you can add that to all your enemies and everything and you kind of get a random shooting or throwing action and it will be quite useful for a lot of games.
Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about this tutorial, you can comment them down below or you can subscribe on YouTube to get updated every single week when I come out with a new tutorial. Or you can go to blenderreel.com and you will see all the new tutorials coming up there every week as well. So have a great week and keep blendering.